Hi, I'm Sam Monaghan, MHA CEO. September is World Alzheimer's Month and within MHA we're shining a spotlight on the power of talking about dementia. It's really important to raise awareness of how it impacts the daily lives of people affected by the condition and challenge the stigma that surrounds it. It's also a great opportunity for us as an organisation and as individuals to share our thoughts, stories and feelings about caring for those living with this complex disease. Receiving a dementia diagnosis can leave a person feeling very alone, confused and low. But with the right care and support, we can make a difference. I'm now going to hand over to David Moore as he shares his thoughts on the ongoing steps being taken by MHA colleagues in tackling dementia. We'll also hear from colleagues in the field as they share their stories. Hi and thank you for that Sam. My name's David Moore and I'm the Dementia Lead for MHA. In this session I'm just going to talk a bit about World Alzheimer's Month but first of all I just want to talk to you about why dementia is my passion. When I was about 12 years old my granddad came to live with myself and my parents and I was extremely close to my granddad. He was the one I looked up to, he was the one who used to take me to the football, we used to do a lot together. But we'd noticed that he'd changed quite a bit. I'd noticed that he'd started to call myself John, which was my dad's name. And there was all other key changes about him. Over a period of time where he lived with me, my mum and my dad, we noticed that he was gradually getting worse until eventually, with great guilt, my mum decided that he had to go into a care home to get the specialist support that he needed. And it was a real shock for us when he did go into that care home. He went from somebody who we found quite difficult to somebody who kind of regained a lot of his old skills and abilities. His dementia didn't go, his Alzheimer's didn't disappear, but it was because of the quality of care that was given in that home that improved his quality of life. So it's because of that, seeing how, as a family, we struggled to support somebody with dementia, seeing how a care home could really improve the quality of life for somebody living with dementia, and how other types of care could also impact on the quality of life of somebody with dementia made me realise this was an area I really wanted to get into. Since that, it's made me realise that so many people are affected by dementia. We estimate currently there's about 850,000 people with dementia living in the UK. And that number is expected to increase quite rapidly over the next few years. And that's simply because people are living longer. And of course, it's not just in the UK where the numbers of people with dementia are increasing. It's a global epidemic. We've become used to that term recently, epidemic. But I think it's important to use that word to get people to realise the urgency of what's going on globally. Because of that, in September, we have a global effort to try and raise awareness about Alzheimer's and dementia called World Alzheimer's Month for the whole of September. At MHA, where we support many people with dementia, both in the community and in our care homes, we're looking at different ways to raise the profile of World Alzheimer's Month. One of the key things we will be doing is getting our staff to talk about how they support residents and members living with dementia, which you'll see on some of the videos later on. They'll talk about different ways they've supported residents' behaviours, different ways they've supported families, and different ways they've enabled people with dementia to live later life well. One of the key things, though, that we'll be focusing on is why families and friends of people with dementia really matter. In World Alzheimer's Month, we're launching our dementia training for families and friends of our residents and members. Having this knowledge will make sure that family and friends will support us both in the care and the understanding of our residents and members living with dementia. Also part of World Alzheimer's Month is making us, as colleagues, as staff members, all of us aware about dementia and how we can support people with dementia and their family and friends. One of the key ways is by looking at and understanding the behaviours that some people with dementia might show. In the past, we often described these behaviours as challenging or difficult. But what we're trying to do now at MHA is to think differently. To think of these behaviours as forms of communication about an unmet need. By doing that, we're hoping that we can focus on ways of finding out what the need is and then reducing the behaviour. 
So for example, if a person with dementia is asking to go home or is asking for their deceased parents, it's about thinking, well, why are they asking that? Why are they asking for a deceased parent? Is it because that person represented love and security and comfort? And now, in a time of anxiety, they're searching for that love and comfort and security. As staff, as people supporting residents and members living with dementia, it's up to us to try and understand these behaviours and trying to find out how we can support them. But key knowledge, key understanding often comes from other members of staff, but also family. What I'm going to do now is introduce us to Alan. We'll be talking about his experience of supporting his mom living with dementia. Hi, uh, my name's Alan Hickingbottom and I work in the trust fundraising team at MHA at Epworth House. Um, I'm talking a little bit today about the experience of my mum and my family um, over the last few years. Mum is 94 now, uh, has been married to my dad for 67 years, hardly ever been separated during that time and we're still quite a close family. I'm one of three sons. Around about four years ago, mum started to show some signs of dementia. She had time in and out of hospital and it became clear that my dad, who's 95, was just not able to cope looking after her um, on his own on a long-term basis. And as it turned out, uh, she moved into a care home, a, a residential home, literally a few weeks before lockdown started. It's been really difficult for the family and, and my dad in particular uh, because of all sorts of feelings about mum being abandoned in the home because we simply haven't been able to, to go and visit her. We know that's not the situation, but in our hearts, it doesn't make it any easier um, for us to, to live with that and not being able to interact with her. Dad has found it really difficult, hardly ever been separated from her, and then suddenly completely separated. Um, Mum, unfortunately, uh, has really lost the ability to talk rationally on the phone um, to members of the family. So the, the separation has been really um, quite, I'm not sure what the word is, it's, it's, it's been really stark from, from what the relationship was before. And really it's only because I've been working uh, at MHA for the last four years or so that I, I've really probably been able to have a bit more insight into, into how things really develop with people who are living with dementia and, and to try and explain to Dad um, some of the difficulties and, and how he needs to, to think about interacting with her in the future and that physically she's the same person but, but mentally she has a very different outlook now and, and it's we, we have to interact with her in different ways um, for, for the rest of the time that she's going to be with us because she is a different person to, to, the, to the lady he married. One of the things that really brought it home um, to me was recently when my dad was able to go and visit mum that the very first thing he remarked on was that he thought her hair looked a mess um, and that's really I suppose because for the last three four years um, while she's been living at home prior to going into the, the care home he would do her hair every day he would put hairspray on for her make sure she looked really nice she's always been one who's gone to the hairdressers on a regular basis and really that was the first thing he noticed and, and he clearly hadn't taken really any um, thought to what the home had actually been through. They've spent 18 months caring for her and protecting her and doing everything they can for her. And his only comment is, well, her hair looks a mess, but that's because it's the one thing that he always made sure was, was absolutely spot on. From the family point of view, I think mum, mum is difficult to, to cope with at the moment. She will tell us things that we really are sure are, are not happening. She will tell us that she's not having proper meals, but obviously we can talk to the staff and we know that they do spend time with her, trying to make sure that, that she does eat the meals, that she's properly hydrated, because that was another thing that she didn't do at home. She wouldn't take the drinks that 
um, people told her we know that the staff do spend time trying to make sure that, that she does the right thing from that point of view, trying to support her to interact more with residents in the home because she has become very withdrawn. For us, knowing that the staff understand what makes mum tick and, and what triggers behaviour and, and thoughts that, that make her unhappy, that they actually take the time to, to try and, and look after her in the way that she needs looking after. We can tell that they understand what needs to be done to, to stop the anxiety and the shouting and the aggression and, and get her back to a calm place where she needs to be. Don't try and think that you're going to be able to cope with it really great, that you won't be sad that you won't cry from time to time because I've cried when I've come home from visiting mum. Take the time to find out what information you can and, and to talk to the people who, who are caring for your relative now um, because it's, it's a difficult condition for people to live with, it's a difficult condition for the families to come to terms with. Um, but don't be afraid to talk about it like mental health, it, it's a health issue be prepared for things to be different. Be prepared to think about different ways of interacting with your relative that you may never have thought of in the past because what you've done in the past really probably isn't going to work in the future. It can still be a life um, where people with dementia have a future, um, but we can learn to make the best of it and have the best interaction with the person who's living with dementia by changing some of the things that we do, taking advice from professionals and experts and people with experience about what works and what doesn't work and what will make things better. Hi, I'm Kate Maswern, Head of Chaplaincy for the North. My top tips for helping people living with dementia are one, be warm and friendly. That might not always be what comes back, but it can help the person to feel valued and cared for. And it helps me to get the next one right. Two, try to be calm and patient. That can be really hard when you're having the same conversation for the umpteenth time but if I've already put myself in a friendly mood, then it's a little bit easier. Three, be in the world of the person. When my granny had dementia, she spent a lot of time thinking she was in the US where she'd been as a young woman. We had some great conversations as long as I could inhabit her world. Hello, I'm Sadie Porteous, manager of Bradbury Grange. My free tips on helping someone that is living with dementia would be always be aware of your own behaviour. Um, be positive, smile on your face, always remain calm and show lots of kindness. It's always helped me in gaining someone's attention, but also building a trusting relationship. Secondly would be break down any activities of living into simple tasks that are achievable. Um, therefore, we're not setting people up to fail. And thirdly, always ask questions that are simple, that someone is able to answer, and just allow that time for them to process what it is you are asking or informing them of. How do I support people to live later well life in dementia? Would be understanding and gaining knowledge on someone's life story. Um, so we recognise what's important to that person. We can promote person-centred care and engage them in things that they enjoy doing, that they are interested in. Um, this can also help with any behavioural or psychological symptoms with someone living with dementia. But also most importantly, for when someone becomes the dementia advances, we can still uphold their dignity in recognising their personhood. So always, person first, dementia second. 
The biggest challenges for me in supporting people living dementia, one of them would be bereavement. Um, how do we console someone that keeps asking for their loved one that has passed away? Um, in one respect, want to tell them the truth, but then if we see them go through the grieving process each time, then surely that is also being cruel. Um, so yes, I do struggle with that. Um, and secondly, restlessness. Um, being able to recognise and engage people in things um, does help, but occasionally I have cared for people that no matter what you try, um, they don't see it or they don't recognise you in even being there. Um, and that I do find quite upsetting when I just want to relieve someone of their distress or what their thought process is going through. Hello, my name is Julie Dowie. I am the Scheme Manager for Swindon MHA Communities and um, I'd like to answer these questions regarding um, living with dementia. So my three tips for helping people living with dementia is patience, um, understanding and an awareness of the um, disease. Um, how do I support people? Um, I feel my approach is um, gentle, friendly and non-judgmental. Um, and biggest challenges, I suppose, um, it's coming to terms with their diagnosis if they've just recently had it um, and just supporting the family as best you can, knowing where, where they can go to for further support um, and just being there for people really, 